sorry I left you guys hanging, but I am back with a tutorial that will knock your socks off. Actually, it's a master class, and this is part one of four classes I'm going to be doing. I'm going really deep dive style on the Pottery Barn finish that so many of you love. Many of you have become a masters yourself, and so it's really exciting to see. I can't wait to share all the tips and tricks up my sleeve because I have been doing this finish for five years, and I've done it on hundreds of pieces of furniture. And in fact, that's going to be the last video of the series. I'm going to show you every Every single piece of furniture I've ever done with the Pottery Barn finish. It's just going to be like a slideshow and I'll tell you what variations I have made and you can see the evolution of the finish over that time and it's just going to be really fun and exciting so buckle up let's go. The first thing I did was clean the pieces really well obviously and I did a little bit of scuff sanding and a little clear shellacking over any raw wood parts and so you know that beginner stuff you guys already probably know but if you don't you can check out my ebook and I go over all that stuff in there and I go over it in the channel for free as well. So the paint that I'm using is Benjamin Moore Advance in the color Bar Harbor Gray. But you could use any light tan you have or uh, I've, you guys have seen me do a pinkish tan when I want to get that pinkish color undertone or you'll see me do a more neutral color like this and it just depends on what you want to go for. That will be something that we go into on this four part series. We will be talking about all the different undertones that your Pottery Barn finish can have and which paints and stuff like that that you might want to use depending on your floor color, your room color and things like that. So that'll be in the master class for sure. Let me know in the comments even if it's the same person and commenting over and over again if there is a question that you have because I haven't finished completely videos three and four of the masterclass series for the Pottery Barn finish. So let me know in the comments if there's something that I didn't hit on today that you really, really, really have um, a burning question about and I will be sure to throw it in there. And this first thing that I wanna talk about is making sure that your sheen is even throughout your entire piece, especially on larger areas like the tops of dressers or the top of a table. I can speak on this because I have made every single mistake there is to make with this finish. And one of those mistakes that I made a lot was sanding an area that had scratches. And then when I would seal it with like clear shellac or whatever primer, and then I would go over it with the paint, you could still see the difference in the sheen when the light hit it when I would go over it with my paint. And that was a problem when the glaze went on. So you would have the glaze absorbing more into that area that wasn't as shiny. So it is very important that you have a nice satin or semi-gloss finish before you go in with the glaze. That's going to be the perfect surface to do this finish. Here are some of the tools you guys have seen me use throughout the videos and, and years here, but I do make some changes and I'll talk about which tools I am using now and, and why. The first tool that you're gonna use is just a regular paintbrush to apply the glaze, just basically dabbing it around the surface area that you're gonna be working on, the section that I'm working on in this video are the, are the top three drawers there and maybe a little bit of the side. And I find that I can get away with working in that area pretty good, but you might find that you need to work in a smaller section. And I do recommend if people wanna do this like on a tabletop, their first go, I highly recommend doing something smaller first, practicing on a poster board or something along those lines versus doing a big area because it is harder to get this finish just right on a big area. Here's the decorative glaze that I use. Rust-Oleum. I find mine locally, but as we've seen this finish go so viral, people are using lots of different products and uh, name brand products and things, and I've liked the looks of a lot of them. Then the deck staining brush, that is the same. I always use this. This is absolutely paramount. Do not skip this step. Anytime I've seen somebody's pottery barn finish that they share and they're not happy with, it's generally, I can tell from the pictures that they didn't use the deck staining brush and they certainly didn't use it enough. But one thing that I'm doing now, in addition to just brushing with the deck staining brush is I'm dabbing with the deck staining brush. Especially when I have uh, details around the corners, like those those little details that, that would cause the product to pool up around the, the edges of it. Dabbing really distributes the product so nice and evenly, and it really just does a great job. It's a bit of an arm workout, so <laughs> we'll all have really buff arms together. I do find that taking the handle off of my deck staining brush and just gripping around it with my hand is really 
nice. Although I would love for my hand to just like fit in at like a glove or something. That would be pretty cool. But dabbing is absolutely a game changer. And if you're not dabbing with your deck staining brush, dabbing and brushing, dabbing and brushing, then um, add that to your arsenal because you'll find it, it is really, really helpful at getting a nice, even application. And the deck staining brush is really the key if you want to get a lighter look. It's like even lighter. We'll talk about some of the variations of looks later. The deck staining brush is your secret weapon there as well and distributing the product evenly. I also still use the dog grooming tool. I This is a silicone dog brush that I wash and reuse. Back in the day, I bought this actually for my dog <laughs> and then it didn't work out. I, didn't, I, I couldn't figure out how to use it. I think some of you guys in the comments told me I needed to be using it to like remove the hair off my clothing or something. But anyway, I decided to throw it on my Pottery Barn finish and see if it helped. And it did a great job at giving nice, smooth brush marks and not scratching the surface. It's so awesome. It's become one of my favorite tools in furniture refinishing. And if product builds up, you can just wipe it away with a wet cloth. And then the whisk broom, the oh so viral whisk broom was really the claim to fame for a while there. But now I've switched over to using softer brooms. And today I'm going to show you guys my favorite little hack. This is an ice scraping brush that I've modified to be my little broom. So I'll show you how I make that brush here in a second but it works so well and I've found that it is it gives me these little nuanced bow wood streaks just every once in a while it'll just make one that's extra thick or deep and the variation in texture is very subtle but I love it so much and this also removes dog hair and debris out of my finish it like flicks it out of the finish versus like dragging it and making a big mark on my faux wood. So I really love this thing. I'm going to show you how I made it here. <laughs> this is a reenactment, but I laid it down on my chop saw and then, you know, <laughs> and, and cut it. And then, so I cut the handle off. I didn't want that big handle. And then I cut the ice scraping part off. And that, that thing is long gone now. I don't know where the top went. And then one more thing that I did to finally modify it to be perfect is I thinned the brush layers down to about one layer. Maybe some areas there are two layers. It is a very thin, it is a very light brush and I wash it and reuse it, wash it, reuse it. And you know, paint builds up on the tips a little bit. It's no biggie. Some areas are completely missing. I feel it gives me a more nuanced finish and I'll talk about that and show it later, but there are a lot of advantages to using this particular brush versus using <laughs> using the um, whisk broom. And if you don't have a chop saw at home and you can't get like one of your neighbors to cut it for you or whatever, you can actually use the saw that they have at Home Depot or Lowe's and you can just saw it by hand in the store when you buy it. <laughs> now you might need to live in an area where they sell these. I had to actually I got mine um, online so in Georgia. I don't think they probably do, but I didn't see them around. Anyway, it's such a great tool. I don't have to go from one end to the other. I can just do these short little brushes in the middle. And that's really nice because now I can like brush an area that's a little too dark. I can just brush that specific area. And it's such a fine detailed brush stroke mark, I guess you want to say. And the, the brush bristles... <laughs> that's hard to say the brush bristles are so small and soft um that they don't really make too much um too many marks so I do have to brush more but I feel like the brush is more even and it kind of lines up with what I'm doing overall with the piece right it's just an overall lighter application of the glaze and so you don't need to wipe away and brush as much because there's less glaze you can see I'm working in my dining room <laughs> I just wanted to show you guys that in case you thought I had this awesome designated area I do have a garage full of furniture <laughs> at the moment and it's pretty cold at the moment too but so here's another hack. I don't think I've shared this until today. There's Teddy Boy. He wants to come inside, but his fluffy tail will destroy my glaze. I'm sure many of you guys have been there. <laughs> a dog or a kid walks by and 
touches it or you yourself out of curiosity touches the glaze and removes it we will be going over that in this master class series later on in the later videos i'll be talking about how to fix flaws how to touch up stuff even if it's been a year you can touch up your faux wood looks and um, i actually send touch up paint with my customers on I'll be talking about all that. But right now, the tip is the makeup brush. And that makeup brush you just saw there, I, I mean, they're like a dime a dozen. There's so many of them everywhere you look. And it's great for working in small little areas. It can really change the game. It efficiently blends the finish without it looking streaky. So it's kind of like a mini deck staining brush. That's really what this makeup brush does for you. I'll show some more close-ups of that makeup brush technique here in a minute when I work on the drawer fronts, but right now I'm doing the top of the dresser and I'm just gonna go through all the steps again since this is a master class. <laughs> Who doesn't love a little bit of repetition? I started with a painted surface. It was all the same sheen. I had a nice satin borderline semi-gloss sheen because Benjamin Moore Advance is a little bit shinier. Uh, they're satin than like a regular paint. So let's call it semi-gloss, okay? Then I get my product on there. I'm applying about half as much as I used to back in the day. And then I'm using a dabbing action with the deck staining brush. That is my fluffy brush. I do not add product to my deck staining brush. I just, it's the product that's on there from as I'm working. It starts to build up a little bit and I will wipe it away with a shop cloth or ShamWow or whatever um, you need to use to, to get rid of some of the buildup that can happen as you go because it will start to darken your color, right? And you saw me dip it in the beginning, but that was just to get going. Then I have my dog grooming tool going in with that step. That's step number three in the glaze process. So step number one was get it on there. Step number two, blend it. Step number three, dog grooming tool. Step number four is your broom. And you can use any broom of your choice, but my favorite right now, as you guys know, is this ice scraping <laughs> contraption. <laughs> it's really great. I hope all of you guys will go and make one. You can, it, it's just, it'll take you five minutes if you have a chop saw or you can Chop one at your hardware store. Such a great tool to blend and get the color even so you don't have any areas that are too dark. There I am removing, look like a little bit of a hair. I kind of plucked underneath it and it was easy to just keep brushing and brushing and brushing until the hair was off the surface. That will be part of the masterclass series is fixing flaws, what to do if debris falls in your finish, how to start all over again, all that good stuff that you guys ask. I really plan to cover it all. Here I go in with that makeup brush again. And then here's another tool that I'm showing you guys probably for the first time, this crevice tool. It's for cleaning, but I find that it is working really well for little areas that I need to do the brushing that the that my other broom is too big for. And then you see me go in with the, I can't see very well on this um, <laughs> from the angle I am filming. I would normally do it different. You guys wonder sometimes, why do you do it that way or this way? It's like a lot of times I'm just doing it so that my body is out of the camera so you guys can see what's going on <laughs> I might go in a little bit of a different order if I were not filming oh I wanted to give a shout out to my sister-in-law Ashley she has this cute little business that she started and she is making custom printables like invitations for a baby shower fourth of July party I mean everything from Father's Day to Mother's Day to all sorts of little, if you can think of a, an event to celebrate, she's got a printable for it and you're going to want to see them. The attention to detail is insane. She's such a sweet person. She's the kind of person you want to support when it comes to small business. So I just wanted to give her a shout out. It's called Waldron Avenue. It'll be linked. Her name's Ashley. She's awesome. If you have a small business, let me know in the comments and I would love to give you a shout out, especially if it's a business from the heart and you're the kind of person that's just trying to, you know, 
find your creative voice again and and just get out there. I love seeing that kind of stuff. If you've got a furniture um, business, if you've got a YouTube channel, let us know in the comments what your small business is or what your small business is going to be when you start one. And um, I would love to start a little community where we can su support each other and, and I can know about your businesses. So that's cool. Then I go in with this makeup brush you can see again coming in clutch. It is so handy to have this little makeup brush and you can wash it and reuse it and it's great because you know if I were to try to smooth this area out with the deck staining brush it's it's so big and it's gonna accidentally I'm going to mess up the top that I just finished and and it makes sense to do the top of the dresser and then do the lips around the edges and that works really well for me. So you see me going in with the sponge and dabbing away the buildup that happened. That's going to help your dry time because those are usually the areas that, that take forever to dry because it's a glob of glaze and, you know, that's going to take a while. I do want to tweak my little detail crevice tool here because you can see it's removing a little bit too much of the finish. And so I need to shave away with my razor like I did on the other um, ice scraping brush. So I'm, I'm probably going to do that. <laughs> and then I'll have that in the next video. But if you don't have one of those, you can just put your fingers and, and try to press on your broom that you have. And I've even done this with the big whisk broom. This is another handy little paintbrush that I was using before I started using the makeup brush. And, and it's nice. Something like this that's a little bit more dense is really great for small areas, but it's just not as good as the makeup brush. So, you know, use what you have, obviously, but and then upgrade and, and change your processes as you go. But yeah, it does a pretty good job. You know, sometimes I'm going back and forth. I'm doing a little bit of brushing, a little bit with the, my makeup brush or small brush and just doing a little bit of detail work. It is hard to get the smaller areas. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like, oh, it's just so easy for me. Sometimes I have to wipe it away and start all over again, but most times I can fix it while it's still wet and just do a bit of brushing and, you know, smooth it all out. I do feel like the lighter finish that I'm showing you guys today and what I do lately, it is more forgiving than the, as far as the, look of the glaze goes <laughs> it's not as forgiving on like flaw hiding on the actual piece of furniture but we'll get to that a little bit later a lot of people ask me what to do on the legs and so I wanted to just single this part out and really give it to you especially when it comes to curvy furniture which is one of the reasons why I picked this particular set to do the video on because I feel like the curvier the furniture it is trickier. It's some of my like most favorite ones that I've done have been on Kirby Furniture. So what I'm doing here is dabbing, which I've been talking about a lot today. And you can see me kind of pressing on the side of the deck staining brush. That is so that my little flyaways are not getting into the finish that I have on the drawer fronts that I've already wrapped up. So I have not done, and see if I do mess it up, I'll just go back through and kind of brush it and try to fix whatever I might have messed up. Either from brushing the drawer fronts, I messed up the side, or brushing the side, I messed up that. And you might say, oh, Shannon, well, why don't you just take all the drawers out and do it that way? I do sometimes um, out of absolute necessity. Sometimes you just absolutely have to. But if I don't have to, I won't because less debris falls in my finish and it takes up less space. And since it's going to be drying for three whole days, possibly longer, depending on your climate, I need it. You know, it's better if the drawers are in <laughs> and it's just, it works a lot better for me in my life. But hey, you do you. There's also, another reason why I like to do it with the drawers in is because I can look at the colors and make sure it's all the same color because you guys who have done this before, you know how much the color can vary by the amount of glaze you apply. So I, it helps me to have all the drawers in and everything. All right, here's another tip. That little orange little um, washcloth that you see there is called a ShamWow and that is one of my magical tips in this video is grab yourself some ShamWows. They are a little pricey when you consider what they are, but they don't have any lint at all, and so I love them for applying wax, and I love them for the amount of moisture that they absorb on my wet plate over there in the corner, and that's what I'm calling it. It's my wet plate, and I have a damp 
microfiber cloth or sham wow or whatever towel you have it's laying on a tray and I have all my work supplies laying on there so they're all kind of staying damp as well and so this process might take me you know an hour maybe two hours if I'm doing a lot of different pieces which I am I'm doing a dresser two nightstands and a tall dresser so you know having my my stuff stay wet and damp while I'm working is great you're going to get some nice close-up action on this drawer front. So that's one of the reasons why I pulled it out. And I'm sitting right in front of the sunny window. So you can really see all the texture that's happening as I do the dabbing. And then smoothing it all out. And you can see wh when I'm able to really look <laughs> from above, I don't get the pooling on the sides. That buildup of all the glaze. And then we're going to go in with the dog grooming tool all the way across. Even oh, I go right over the top of the um, bump as much as I can. And then I'll go and do a little extra on the side. And then it goes back on the wet plate face down. Then we go in with the broom of your choice. So you can see, like I'll do a little extra wherever I feel it needs it. You can't really see up close as I'd like maybe for this video, <laughs> but I do show you up close shots here in a minute. So stick around for that. But you, you know, I was talking about those nuanced little, see that little mark it just made? That's what I'm talking about. And see those little marks in the middle? That's what I'm talking about that this ice scraper brush does for me. And it's very nuanced, but it looks so good and it's very realistic for the type of wood that I'm trying to create. So it's really nice just to have like a little few of those marks in there. And I never know when they're going to happen. It kind of happens when I'm a little bit more sideways with the brush, I guess. But I love when they happen. You might not like that. I don't know. That might not be your thing, but I like a couple of those versus when I do it with the broom, I tend to get a lot more variation. And then normally I actually use the makeup brush for the tops of the door fronts. Don't know why I didn't here. But, and uh, you know, doing the lips of the dresser, I feel like is, uh, is a good move to make I always do it <laughs> this is a kind of a crappy job I did here on the side I actually usually do a little better than that and paint along the side and if you don't um, do it while you know you're kind of just trying to get the finish on there and get it you know do a good job you can actually go back and add it in a little bit later and especially being able to use the makeup brush that's one of the huge like helping tools there is because you just need to use a little bit of glaze you don't have to get your deck staining brush out or, you know it's just a tiny little brush that you can go in and do touch up work which is really nice so after a few days of drying i they were dry enough to move out in the garage and <laughs> she is still around guys um she's busy at school most of the days but she's still my painting pal and uh, I'm sure she'll take over this channel one day she's quite the little artist here we have my dry brushing paints of choice I do a lot of different colors though when it comes to dry brushing sometimes I use yellow sometimes I use pink and when I say that I mean like you know tan versions of those colors this one is more of a gray it's called requisite gray I think and then the other one's more of like a khaki greenish undertone I at least do two colors of dry brushing now I used to only do one now I do two to three sometimes I do four colors of dry brushing on a piece and I feel like it just makes it to where it can go in any space kind of like a rug has all those colors you know and it can go in a room and it just looks great I've had it before where customers got the piece home and they, you know, they just couldn't quite figure out how to make it work in their space and stuff. And I've had to like, I've actually driven to people's houses and dry brushed their dressers. And I was like, okay, at this point, I'm just going to start dry brushing every single piece, all these different colors, because that way it's going to go in their space. They're going to be so happy with it. They'll ask me to do custom work. You know, the list goes on. Although it's so funny. I do 
<laughs> this isn't my most profitable finish <laughs> by any means. It's probably my favorite finish because I have like my ego wrapped up in it and I, um, you know, it makes me feel special. I don't know. But it's it's fun to do, but it's definitely not my most profitable um, way of making money painting furniture. You know, most of the time if you want to make money painting furniture, solid colors are the way to go. Something trendy. But I do love this finish very, very much, which is why here we are in a master class for it. <laughs> Who would have thought I'd be doing a master class with a pottery barn finish? Ah, oh, that's so funny to me. But here we are. So if you don't know how to dry brush, um, hopefully this video will teach you how to do it. But if not, there's going to be more stuff going into more detail. Basically, you get a trip, you have your chip brush, right? And if it's not jagged enough on the edges, I trim my chip brush to make it more jagged. So with a pair of scissors. And then you see me wiping with my finger. If you apply too heavily your dry brush, like see there, it's kind of like too, maybe it's too thick for you. You can just wipe it with your finger. You can wipe it with a cloth and that will solve a lot of your problems. Keep a damp cloth by as well and you can just remove the whole thing, right? If you, if you don't like the way it looked. But for me, it makes such a difference doing the dry brushing. It covers a myriad of flaws that maybe I made during my glazing process because it's hard to see from every single angle what is going on. <laughs> and it's, so it's comforting to me. It allows me to work a little bit more freely and a little bit more carefree. And I enjoy that state when I'm painting and knowing that I can kind of touch it up at the end with the dry brushing and that I can kind of fix it up if I messed up a little area or um, if I just kind of need to hide something that looks a little funky. So I am applying it a little thicker for this video than I actually do in real life because when I do it in real life uh, for the video, you can't see. You literally can't even, can't even see it. And I think that's why a lot of people didn't do it. Number one, and some of my, like, my early tutorials, I was like, ah, you could do it. Should I do it? I don't know. It doesn't make a big difference, does it? And now I'm like, oh my gosh, girl, you have to do dry brushing. Don't skip dry brushing <laughs> at all. It's like it pulls it together so much. It's night and day. I should have taken a picture. I wonder if I have a video here that I can show. Oh, I do have it. Okay. So this isn't a great, it's so hard to show you guys on camera, but trust me, I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, ah, it doesn't look really that much different, but I'm telling you in real life and up close and personal, it is drastic. The difference it makes in pulling it together. And then again, we're talking about thinking about the whole room, not just thinking about this dresser by itself. How is it going to look in a room? And the more colors that are on there, you know, having three, four colors on there is really going to make a big difference for it pulling the space together. You're going to be so happy you did the dry brushing. I'm telling you, that's one to master. We'll be working on it in the masterclass series. I promise it'll be something you'll be so glad you did. Then, you know, just to share with you guys what I did for this actual set, um, I did throw on these little wheels. Actually, Brad did off camera. <laughs> and then for the curved drawer fronts, oh my goodness, I really struggled with um, the holes. <laughs> I have this really nice uh, set that True Position sent me and they are great for regular drawer fronts, but the curved fronts, I could not figure it out. Maybe you guys have some tips and tricks. You can help me. I was really struggling, but I did get the hardware on there and I'll, I'll make sure and link all that hardware. And then off camera, I did do some waxing. I used Minwax in the color natural. And then that touch up paint I was talking about, we'll, we'll go more in detail later in these, the four videos, but uh, the touch up paint there is, I showed a picture of it and I just get it on Amazon. Okay. That's all for part one. Let's look at the before and the after. It wouldn't be a video if I didn't do a proper before and after, right? It's such a pretty finish. I'm so glad you guys joined me today as we created it, and I'm so excited to be sharing this master class with you. This is part one, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next parts two, three, and four. Make sure to comment and let me know if I should add anything in those series. I'm not done with number three and four, and check out my ebook, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!